Hi guys, Stan from Nile again. Another good episode of Kill and Pet. Today, we're going to be talking about the 100 ohm sensors used on our high temperature kilns, pallet, and firewood units, and some of our older L200s and L50s. For those of you with the L53 and the L200 with the wet bulb dry bulb controls, this does not apply. Okay? And today I get a break, we get to watch Mitch show us about. It's always handy to have an outdoor work table. So we'll trim the wire further enough away from the old splice so we get a nice, good, clean connection. Now you want to strip the wire outside insulation off and make sure you don't damage any internal wires. Now we will not need the shield or the green wire. So we'll start by cutting those off. And now we've got our three points of contact. Now, if your probe just stopped working and it hasn't been run over by a forklift, it's a good idea to test the wiring. So we'll do a quick test by twisting the nice cleanly stripped wires together. So we can do a resistance check of the three conductors of the wire. We'll twist them together, put them on, so they're not grounded to the table. And now we'll get our multimeter and set it for ohms. Now we'll go over to our control panel where the wires are already disconnected. We'll attach the meter and now we'll check the resistance between all the wires. We're getting 1.6 ohms between red and black. We should see near 1.6 ohms. And we see exactly 1.6 ohms between red and white. So now we'll double check between, and we're also seeing 1.6 ohms. So this is showing us that our wiring is good and has a resistance of 1.6 ohms returning. You wanna start by cutting all your wires the same length. So we'll straighten these out. And we'll come back so we can get them as long as possible with a new So we want to pay attention to the gauge. So we'll use 24 gauge here on the strippers. Now sometimes the insulation doesn't come off completely evenly, but it's better to go on a second take than to damage the strand wire strands. So the 22 gauge is definitely what you want. And see that stripped it without damaging any of the wire strands. And then I'll twist it. Make sure the strands are nice and tight. Now we can move on to our next step but that will be soldering, splicing. So we'll splice our RTD connection. I've got an RTD here that I had previously used so I cut and restripped all the wires. First start with the heat shrink tubing. Cut three pieces about a half inch long like so. Be sure to install the heat shrink tubing before you attempt to make the splice. Okay, after you've got the splices twisted together, now it's time to solder them. Note, if you're soldering outside using the gun style soldering iron, it's going to provide better results due to wind. Now 
Now note, I'm heating the wire and allowing the solder to flow on it. Now it's time to inspect them. You want the solder to penetrate both the wires so it holds them together. Now you want to make sure there's no exposed wire. Double check that it's completely covering all the bare wire. It is. You want your outer piece to cover the entire cable on each side. And now we can shrink the tornado. Try not to focus too much of the heat in one place because you can melt the heat shrink too. Now you want to make sure that your heat shrink tubing seal and epoxy is coming out on the end to make sure you get a watertight seal. And there we have it. Well guys, pretty good, huh? I know it's exciting stuff. Anyways, make sure that you subscribe and like down below. If you have any questions or anything you want to talk about, send me an email. I'd be glad to answer your questions.